everyone. Say, would you like to know what's in my bag? Another what's in my bag. What's in my purse video? What's in my bag? What's in my work bag? What a ludicrously capacious bag. What? Hi guys, I'm gonna show you what's in my bag. What's in my bag? The age-old question that has long puzzled philosophers and the general public alike. Whether it's a Jansport backpack or a Birkin bag that costs more than most people make in a year, millions of people regularly tune in to see what contents lie within. Celebrities, college students, tech bros, kids, everyone is desperate to spill the contents of their bag. Why are we obsessed with these videos? Are we searching for product recommendations or ideas on how to optimize our bag space? Or is it just good old fashioned nosiness? Let's look at how this trend has evolved over time from an innocent peek behind the curtain to a powerful tool for personal branding and product promotion. Carrie Bradshaw has told us so many times, a bag is not just a bag. Thinking, balls are to men what purses are to women. It's just a little bag, but we'd feel naked in public without it. In a 2006 article, Sometimes a Bag is Not Just a Bag, Daphne Merkin states, Bags also serve as the portable manifestation of a woman's sense of self, a detailed and remarkably revealing map of her interior, an omnium gatherum of myriad aspects of her life, the crucial philofaxed information, as well as the frivolous, lipsticky stuff. You've probably noticed that Merkin specified a woman's sense of self here, and that's an aspect of this trend that I want to focus on. Like the accessories themselves, What's My Bag videos tend to focus on femme-presenting people. Why is that? Handbags have long been a gendered fashion accessory, but that wasn't always the case. In the article, A Mini History of the Tiny Purse, fashion historian Dr. Kimberly Chrisman Campbell points out that until the late 18th century in Western fashion, purses were a unisex accessory. Basically at the end of World War I, we don't have a place to put a pocket. So the handbag goes from just being kind of like this extra thing that has existed for several decades to now being something that you actually need to carry because you can't put your valuables anywhere else. There was just so many more things that women were starting to carry in the 1920s that the handbag had to be used. And so this is kind of like, this is it. Men didn't have to carry purses to hold their belongings where as women did. It's been over 200 years and I feel like not much has changed on that front. I don't think I'll ever get over it trying to squeeze my iPhone 5 into like the teeny tiny pockets of my skinny jeans with half of it poking out just like begging to nosedive or also like getting it in and then you just see the outline of a rectangle on your leg. Really great, really great. Just to be clear, I think that bags, just like makeup, jewelry, whatever else is deemed as like a feminine accessory, I think they're all gender neutral and they can be worn by men, women, non-binary people. What is it that Rihanna says in that video? She's like, people of all gender appropriations? Both men and women and non-binary, people of all um, gender appropriations and the pronouns, everyone is included. So I'm using the term feminine throughout to describe how they're categorized but not like how i view them if you like this video give it a like if you want to subscribe subscribe <laughs> no pressure if you want to just hang out that's cool too anyways far from just a simple storage pouch bags have amassed a huge cultural and personal significance bags have transformed in style shape function over the years to reflect contemporary cultural needs and tastes for example the 1920s saw the rise of the small decorative bags like dorothy bags or pochettes whereas in the 1940s bags became larger squarer and more practical big enough to carry gas masks over the wartime years and they sat comfortably on the shoulder. These evolutions are still present today and reflect the needs of the wearer, but why am I bringing all this up? Why am I talking about bags from the 1920s and the 1940s? Well, with all of this like historical context behind us, consciously or unconsciously, we read what a bag's fabric, shape, size, brand, whatever, what they tell us about the person who's carrying it. So if you think about it, like a working mom might need a like big ginormous tote bag to carry baby equipment, a laptop, notebooks, makeup, other trinkets and necessities. Whereas a celebrity attending a red carpet event might just bring a tiny little purse as a fashion statement, not necessarily to hold anything because maybe they have an assistant that carries the things for them or maybe they just don't really need anything besides their phone. And since we all know this, we can pick up on the kind of cultural clues as to what a bag says about 
about a person. So then if we're watching a what's in my bag video, we know a little bit about the person even before they open their bag. As Anna Johnson writes in Handbags, The Power of the Purse, a good bag becomes an intimate extension of the body. This notion of the bag being an extension of yourself not only pops up in celebrity interviews where people say that they feel naked without their bag, but I know even like myself. I always feel kind of weird if I leave the house without a bag. I always bring an absolute ludicrously capacious bag. She's brought a ludicrously capacious bag. What? What's even in there? Huh? Flat shoes for the subway? Her lunch pail? I mean, Greg, it's monstrous. It's gargantuan. So if I ever leave to go on a walk or something and I just have my phone and my keys, I always feel like I'm forgetting something. And of course, with an object that holds immense personal significance to many of us, Naturally, we'd be curious to see what an object looks like in the lives of people that we look up to, that we're curious about, that we, we love, we hate, we love to hate. Like I said earlier, What's My Bag videos almost always focus on women, but the major exceptions seem to be where men talk about like tech gear, camera gear, sports gear, insert activity here, gear, and they're almost always showing off backpacks. The videos kind of feel stereotypically masculine in that way, not just because they focus on like electronics or gear or whatever it might be, but also because the bags are just purely functional. The the kind of trinkets, decoration, mementos, and myriad of lip products that exist in the more like feminine what's my bag space are absent. The masculine bag serves a purpose and if it weren't for that necessity it probably wouldn't be carried at all because men aren't encouraged to carry bags around with them as accessories. There is a more traditional like what's my bag-esque video series that focuses on men which is the GQ's I think 10 items I can't live without. Celebs show off their essentials, their favorite snacks, clothes, books, their trinkets and mementos etc. They don't just focus on men but like I think it's interesting how this is kind of the only space where men have that ability to like, show off their trinkets and personal items like things that would normally be carried in a handbag and featured in a what's my bag video. Vinny Daniels character I play in the big short this is all I kept from it you know there's a Stanley Kunitz poem called the layers and he says I have walked through many lives some of them my own so these feel like fragments of lives that I've walked through and this is all that's left of any of them, really. Of course, in this day and age, I think it's more and more popular to see men carrying around bags, not just backpacks, but like bags. And I think most popular is the tote bag, which I think is, it's just gender neutral enough to not be like too gay for the straight men. It also made me think of the weird like man purse subsection of bags where men will carry around like a satchel or something but have to assert their masculinity by inserting man before purse or like man satchel man bag or whatever i don't... carry a bag which is a purse and it goes over my shoulder but it is a man deal it is it is a handbag any way you cut the mustard <laughs> but it is odd how a woman's purse looks so good on me a man huh. are you referring to my man's bag at first, I thought it just looked good, but it's practical, too. Check it out. It's got compartments for all your stuff. Your wallet, your keys, your address book, your makeup. I need to be independent. I need to take a good idea that is, is it's also a great idea, put things into a purse so that no one else can hold them, and you can hold them yourself, and you know where everything is. And let me tell you something. It changed my life. I walk around with my clutch bag. My nurse all day and I'm proud of it. It's just like, it's so odd. It's so odd. But I've noticed from like the straight men, particularly in my life, the ones who would carry tote bags or whatever tend to lean more artsy, whereas the kind of more like traditional masculine men or whatever either never carry bags or are strictly backpack men. Admittedly, my survey pool of young straight men is small, <laughs> but I did conduct a little research. I asked my brother if he ever carries a bag and he said that he will carry a a tote bag in the summer but uh, most of the time if he is bringing a bag it's going to be a backpack because it means that he's probably taking out like his camera or his laptop or something that could easily get damaged in a tote bag. I also asked bestie Richard who you 
may know from um, my Glossier video, to ask his straight younger brother to, to get the vibe of the young straight Gen Z men. And Richard's brother said that he was probably the only one who ever carried a tote bag. And even then, it was only in like specific situations, like maybe summertime or if he were bringing a book out, whereas the rest of his friends would probably never carry tote bags. And the book thing made me think of Jess Mariano in Gilmore Girls and like how he'd always fold a paperback book in half and put it in his back pocket when he was like walking around. And like, surely if you're always carrying books around with you, like you'd start carrying a bag. Like at some point you must. And or else like, are you only going to read books that fit in your pocket? It's so bizarre. Speaking of men, I don't know what comes to mind when you think of men, but for me, it's definitely stinky especially growing up with two older brothers. I, for one, am never stinky. My body is actually not made up of skin. Instead of an epidermis, it's just layers and layers of deliciously scented soap, lotion, perfume, and deodorant. Oh, and again, speaking of deodorant, this video is brought to you by Wild because, I mean, you can call me a girl gone wild. Wild is a natural deodorant brand that prioritizes sustainability. Their deodorants come in a metal case. This is mine. Look at her. She's so cute. She has my name engraved on her. And you can pop these little deodorant refills into your metal case. The one I have in here at the moment is the Fresh Mountain Air. It's a part of their winter seasonal collection and I really, really like it. The other refill that I have is the Sandalwood and Patchouli one. Oh, they both genuinely they smell so good this kind of like refillable case model cuts down on a lot of the plastic waste that comes with many like mainstream deodorants and because of their sustainable model they've actually saved over 120 tons of single-use deodorants from landfills they also offer a subscription service to get regular refills regardless of temperature i'm a sweaty girl i think it's because my like autistic adhd body cannot regulate temperature properly which is so fun it's just girly things but i actually have found that wild keeps me sweaty and stinky free all day long so if you've been thinking about trying out natural deodorant if you have been wanting to make a switch to a more sustainable deodorant i highly recommend checking out wild and you can get a 30 percent discount off of wild using my code using the link in the description my code is l literacy just like the channel name, E-L-L-E-L-I-T-E-R-A-C-Y. -L -L -E -E just a little side note segue. I'm going to talk about the relationship between consumerism and what's in my bag videos a little later in this video. And I just want to address that I do acknowledge the irony of discussing consumerism and also promoting a product in the same video. But first of all, I, I do hope it's obvious that I only promote like products or services that I genuinely like. And then sponsorships like these really help keep the channel going. I'm working at YouTube full time now and I do everything myself. And these videos are pretty labor intensive, so having the security of a sponsor just really helps. And I know that you probably all like know this stuff anyways, but I felt like it was important to be transparent and genuine and open um, about all of it and also just acknowledge that I know like I'm aware of the irony there um but I just hope you understand like the kind of necessity of that duality I know you probably do but I just wanted to say it so anyways back to the bags the earliest what's in my bag feature I found was in this 1945 magazine that showed child actress Margot O'Brien and actress Maria Montez and what each carries in their purse and this format in print media was kind of the standard of the what's in my bag feature at first and though it would pop up in a variety of like women's magazines from like Cosmo to Elle, Us Weekly was a huge player in the What's My Bag trend as it existed in print media and to this day is like still whipping out those features. With the shift online, What's My Bag was a popular blog post both on individual blog sites and also on Tumblr blogs. Bloggers took the magazine features and adopted them to be more relatable and like, casual, kind of stripped of that allure of wealth and celebrity. And it kind of marked this move from like aspirational to just like relatable and aesthetic photos of the contents of your school bag, your makeup bag, your purse, whatever it was, would rack up notes on notes on Tumblr. But of course, with the advent of YouTube, What's My Bag videos started popping up there. Fashion publications like Seventeen Magazine and Refinery29 would interview celebrities and upload What's My Bag videos. But the What's My Bag videos by like beauty gurus and vloggers really catapulted the trend online. It was a huge trend in in early beauty YouTube in the 2010s. And in the kind of like conversational what's in my bag approach, we got these kind of mini product reviews or which of their makeup products reach like holy grail status and are like good enough to be carried around with them everywhere. And I think from their what's in my purse videos, as the internet has grown, what's in my bag has grown with it. 
with Instagram flat lays and reels, TikToks, shorts. When we look at the kind of like blog post what's in my bag versus the kind of more modern aesthetic what's in my bag, it's interesting to see like how kind of constructed the newer ones look, which makes us ask like how authentic are they? Are they real? Are these things people actually carry around? Or are they just props for the picture? Of course, with celebrities and influencers showing off products, how can we tell what are genuine faves and what are plugs for products? But even with all that said, does it even matter? I guess if you're just liking a photo or reblogging something, it probably doesn't. But if you actually want to know more about the person who posted it, it could ring artificial to realize that this is all a performance created to make you engage with their content or maybe view them in a more like positive light. And it's very easy to see the lines between personal and promotional blur in the modern what's in my bag. And I'm not saying that this wasn't present in, you know, previous features, but I think because of the sheer amount of what's in my bag videos, it's kind of easier than ever to slip in those little promotional plugs. And like the shift from print media to blog posts, the evolution in the what's in my bag video again have shifted things from aspirational to attainable where instead of just kind of like looking up in awe at the products celebrities use now they're only like a few clicks and a you know, dent in your bank account away but from watching all the videos from like say 2010 bd youtube to the modern tiktoks the format of the what's in my bag videos hasn't transformed all that much there are changes again like i said in the kind of casual nature to the aesthetic curated version of it and there are kind of changes with different editing styles that kind of come and go with YouTube naturally. But like, since we've been seeing these kind of videos for so long, why do we still care about them? Social media is all about getting glimpses into each other's lives. And you know, what's more fitting than a what's in my bag video, this kind of like mini encapsulation of someone's personhood, I guess, to get to know them. And I think again, the kind of videos make it all the more easily consumable and like lends itself to storytelling more because maybe an Instagram picture or a Tumblr picture might have had a caption describing things but now that we see people going through things one by one on video all of these like product recommendations and personal anecdotes come out along with the products whether or not that's like a natural process or whether it's something that was a carefully planned this necklace is by a designer called Ian Charms and it says I can make him worse and I just love that. I think that's such a feminist message. There's this endless allure to what's in my bag videos because they act as a glimpse into a person's life. It's like a peek into their, you know, bathroom cabinet or their bedside drawer. But like I've said about the curated nature of them, they can also act as a performance, showing the kind of person you are or showing how you want to portray yourself. And for celebrities especially, it can be a useful tool for personal branding. Sheila McClear writes in this article, the contents of women's personal spaces like handbags and medicine cabinets has become a kind of of feminine performance, a shorthand to reveal something authentic, interesting, or at least aspirational. And this made me think of the top shelf slash shelfies that I talked about in my Glossier video and how like these kind of personal spaces can also be highly like curated and performative, but they also create these aspirational senses where when you're seeing celebs or it girls or whatever using particular products or things or whatever, it can make you want to emulate them by using the same. So the What's My Bag video trend really became a goldmine for personal branding. And in celebrity interviews, you see them being used to make a celebrity seem more relatable or quirky or cool or mysterious or whatever it may be. And like seeing celebrities kind of pull out random trinkets or weird toys or whatever it may be, whether it's organic or curated it does you know give these extra senses of like we know them better or there's more than meets the eye or they're more interesting than i gave them credit for blah 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 trusty wallet i've had her for many years um it has gum on it no if you can see that it's disgusting and it's covered in gum a teeny tiny rubber ducky i have my little my little friend i love him when you watch enough What's My Bag videos, you can see a pattern emerge. Again, McClear writes, in the US Weekly column, it doesn't take long to recognize a pattern. Quirky personal item, healthy snack, beauty products, both low and high end, and something related to kids slash husband slash boyfriend. No one cops to seven lipsticks and an eye primer, unpaid bills, or phone numbers on cocktail napkins. There's a bit of the observer effect to play here. Objects that realize they're being watched will change their behavior, and used tissues will be removed from the bag. 
bag. I think the high and low end product thing is so interesting because I did notice that a lot where celebrities will be like, oh, this is my favorite mascara. I've used it since I was 12 and I got it in the drugstore. It only costs $7. Whereas maybe their favorite lipstick is like a YSL one that costs like $60 or something. And again, I'm not saying that this is all a performance, that they're all lying, that it's all fake, whatever. But when you see the kind of thing over and over again, then you start to like cop on that, oh, hmm, maybe some of them are doing this because they realized that having a cheaper makeup product or whatever it may be gives them a more relatable sense and therefore they're less like divided from the general public so they might be liked more. I know this might all sound like super conspiratorial and paranoid but I don't think it's a big leap to assume that some Vogue What's In My Bag videos are just as carefully constructed or rehearsed as the very obviously rehearsed like 72 questions ones. It's all a way of feeding into parasocial relationships and fostering connections through common items. If we see a rich and famous celebrity carrying around a tangled knot of wired earphones, we can kind of feel like, oh my god, they're just like me, you know, they're, they're not that different from us when celebrities are people, yes, but they also, the rich and famous, live a very different lifestyle to most of us. And of course, with the What's My Bag being such a ubiquitous format, people have started playing with it or making spoofs of it. And one of them is Yuna Bang, an artist who created digital art that they posted on their Instagram stories. And Bang is similar to me in that their interest in What's My Bag videos came from seeing them on social media while growing up. Bang said in an interview with Nylon, having grown up in the 2010s watching beauty and lifestyle YouTubers post their hashtag what's in my bag videos, it really fascinated me to see the what's in my bag phenomenon appear on my feed again, but this time in a mimetic format that felt satirical of their original trend. These what's in my bag videos show cigarette butts, calico critters, rocks, and generally any items that would not typically appear in a serious post. Bang points out connections between the trend and capitalism. We live in a society that supports the notion that we are what we consume. So knowing what's in somebody's bag feeds the parasocial feeling of knowing who someone is. Don't know why I have a G-string in my purse, but don't tell me that you don't have a scrunchie. This is the trick of the trade. We're really flashing back to the 90s. The tousled up do always hit a pair of panties in them. One example of the kind of what's my bag video feeding into a person's image and like parasocial relationship is Khloe Kardashian. She is the sister who's known for being really neat and organized. And in her what's in my bag video, she shows off her system for organizing her bags. Even looking at comments praising Khloe's organizational abilities and stuff, you can see how it really plays into her personal branding and like the aspiration that one day we too could have an artfully stacked display jar full of Oreos. Some celebrities and influencers use What's My Bag videos as advertising opportunities and again the Kardashians are a prime example of this. Like two of Kylie's What's In My Bag videos are just chock full of Kylie skims etc etc. My Kylie skin hand sanitizer for my hyaluronic acid serum that launches on the 8th Team. This is my collaboration with KKW Fragrance. I have my Kylie Skin Scrunchie. I have my Kendall Blotting Powder. And my Kylie Skin Sunscreen. My Kylie Skin Wipe. I have my Skims, which I also love. I did these for Ulta. This one is called Not Your Babe. Then I have Kylie. This is a new one that I have called Risque. I never leave the house without my Kendall Lip Blush. This What's In My Bag video is basically just product placement for like every single Kardashian branded product. Like it got a bit absurd at one point. I was like, Kylie, come on, like we get it. And we can see it in What's My Bag videos from a few years ago, but even more recently, like this year, like, Kylie put up a TikTok What's In My Bag video. And I found this one so interesting because she starts off emphasizing how honest it is. This is like a really honest What's In My Bag because I have not cleaned this bag or gone through this at all. There's so many Kardashian product plugs in it that again, it just, is like an ad. Kylie Skin Hand Sanitizer, Skims Hair Clip, Glow Bombs, Bolt Kylie Lip Liner in shade Kylie. She also mentions like she has an uneven spray tan, giving, you know, relatable vibes. I don't wanna see one comment about my spray tan on my hands because I, it was my fault. I oversprayed them and I kept this, it's just. But then she pulls out a $40,000 Rolex that her daughter was wearing. It's so relatable. Like I hate when I leave my Rolex just lying around in my bag. 
crazy. It's not just the Kardashians that do this. Like, other celebrities will promote their own products in their What's My Bag things, but I think the Kardashians are just such a such an obvious and, like, prime example of this. The What's My Bag trend also influenced fashion with the kind of trend of clear bags. These see-through bags really put the kind of what's in my bag notion on display. Caproni and Melissa's collaboration with Telfar are two brands that had popular clear bags that were sported by celebrities. Raquel Scherer, the brand director of Melissa, says clear bags offer a way for people to express themselves and tell a bit of their story through what they carry. It's a canvas for personal style and creativity, which is at the heart of fashion. I just thought it was really interesting how that kind of like curiosity and that kind of like voyeurism desire to see what people carry around with them had like translated into real world fashion. But of course, it wouldn't be an internet trend without some company grabbing onto it as a means of advertising. The Coach in My Tabby campaign launched in March of this year and features Lil Nas X, Camila Mendez, Koki, and Wu Jin Yan. The campaign had the slogan, what we carry makes us stronger, and in videos, each celebrity goes through what they carry in their Coach Tabby. But it disrupts the regular What's My Bag template of pulling out objects one by one, instead zooming past keys, wallets, and phones to show what they really carry. Carry all my past experiences. I carry my plans for the future. This campaign plays into the symbolic nature of bags that I was talking about earlier, how bags aren't just bags, they're also signifiers of our identities, and they're also storytelling vehicles. But the coach bags also do tell the world that you are wealthy enough to afford a designer handbag. So with Coach, we see the conscious adoption of the What's My Bag trend as a branding vehicle, but What's My Bag videos also have the potential for huge commercial impacts, whether or not they're intentional. Just look at the famous Uniqlo crossbody bag. The bag went viral from this TikTok from April 2022, where this creator showed off how much they could fit in their bag. And then from there, video after video popped up of people showing off just how much they could cram in to this Uniqlo bag, including a full rotisserie chicken. And it had a huge impact on sales. And I thought this example was so interesting because it highlights the power of a single what's in my bag video to affect fashion trends and also to like boost commercial sales. In researching this video, I found some discourse on how what's in my bag videos have a feminist aspect to it. There was a trend recently on TikTok of girls pulling out random like useless items and trinkets against this audio from a misogynistic man saying what does she bring to the table and like and the juxtaposition is kind of a playful response that undermines the you know obviously sexist question while also like showing off cute trinkets and i think this format plays into the wider reclamation of girlhood that we've been seeing online with people posting girl bedside tables girl clutter etc as a way of establishing identity and celebrating the kind of useless trinkets of our lives the notion of like trinkets mementos and clutter is all kind of wrapped up in sentimentality and emotion. And because those ideas of sentimentality and emotion have historically been deemed feminine and thus like belittled, reclaiming those is an act of resistance and empowerment. And it also just turns these kind of collections of silly little things into something of a celebration. What, what's wrong? What is it? How I love being a woman. So from all of this, we've learned that What's My Bag videos are not just about bags. They are about identity, they are vehicles for storytelling, and also branding and advertising. And I know this might have seemed kind of like a random video to make, but I just was thinking about how many What's My Bag videos I see pop up on my like YouTube, my TikTok, my whatever, and also how many I've watched and how like they honestly like never really get old. And I was kind of reflecting on that and thinking like, why is that? And like looking back at my obsession with the 2010s beauty YouTube What's in My Bag videos and then how modern ones like the Vogue series like still rack up millions of views. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive. It wasn't a super, super deep dive, but it was kind of more than most people would think about a What's in My Bag video. So I feel like it, it struck a happy medium <laughs> without getting too like existential and philos philosophical. I always forget how to say that word. Anyways, I hope you have a lovely day and thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one.